Candace Jones. Tell us what you got. First off, I'm a retired banker. And I'm not proud to say that today. You know, I'm not proud to say that today. I was for years up until the 90s, since I started in the 70s. And I personally have read the National Mortgage Settlement. I've read um, the TARP program. Um, I read the, the DOJ. And one thing I could tell immediately when I read this, and Camilla Harris, I can tell that you didn't write this. I can tell that you probably had a few words in it, but the rest of it was written by the banks. One thing you can always be sure of with a bank is that they will promise you the moon, and in the end, they'll take it back. They have wonderful little words they love to slip in. And if anyone ever read the TARP, you could know that it was only suggested that they do modification for these people. Now, first off, I don't believe in these modifications because it's modifying fraud, just as Renee said. These documents are fraudulent in everything I've seen. Over the last three years, I've probably worked with about 100 different people, friends that have come to me, because after I retired, they knew how long I'd been in the business. They knew also that I was an expert with the FDIC, and also I was with the Resolution Trust that took down the savings and loans. So, Camilla, I have to tell you right up front, honey, I think you sold us out. I yes. think you sold out yes. California. Yes. And your citizens deserve much better than that. You're not the only attorney general that did it. All the rest of them did it with the exception of Snyderman. And we can be thankful at least one person or a couple there held out. But I truly am ashamed to say you're our attorney general. One thing I want to tell you is that you're, you started your, the moderator for the attorney general. You were quite proud of that that came out of the National Mortgage Settlement. Well, let me tell you how that's working out for the people. Because, like I said, I've helped a few people, and I have spoken with your moderators. And they are truly just spokesmen for the banks, okay? They don't know what they're doing. Most of the people at the banks don't know what they're doing. I deal with corporate, and I know when they're lying to me. And I want to tell you just a couple of real quick stories. One of them is a widow, okay, with two children that are special needs children. She has a sister that is in the fourth stage of cancer. We worked with Wells Fargo on a loan modification because she didn't have the courage or the stamina for a lawsuit. So we worked for three years with Wells Fargo. After three years, 1,060 documents faxed to the bank, 147 phone calls to the bank. In the end, they said that it's not in the investor's best interest to modify this loan. <laughs> Okay, now she's in a lawsuit. We're backing her up every way we can. I've documented these calls. I've, in the meantime, before they denied her, I was working with your moderator. And let me tell you what the moderator said. There's not really anything we can do to help you. And I asked one of your people at the moderator, I said, here's what I want. I want a copy of the pooling and servicing agreement. If this woman's in a supposed trust, which there again, the bank doesn't know who her investor is, because I've received two letters from Wells Fargo. One letter states it's U.S. Bank. The other letter states that it was Goldman Sachs. They don't know because it's not with an investor. Okay, these trusts closed. They're no longer trading on SEC. They are no longer, they already have closed these trusts. Investors have taken the tax write-off from the IRS. These things have been bought back. Okay, and whenever you call the bank, the first thing they say to you, we are a debt collector. These are people that have bad, bought up bad credit card debt, unsecured debt, that are yeah. now pretending to be a lender. That's saying, exactly. That is exactly. Yeah. Well, they Say are. That one again. They are pretending to be your lender when they are, in fact, a debt collector. I always had the phrase that I called debt collectors the little mafia <laughs> because they just come at you with both guns. Mm -hmm. And they don't have anything to come after. It's an unsecured debt that they're coming after you, and they're modifying. When, in fact, they do, after a couple of years, modify these loans, they put in the document, you cannot come back at us and sue us for anything wrongdoing in the past. Okay, first off, that's illegal, too, to take away your legal rights to sue them. But it's in every loan modification packet. And just to show you an example, here's a banker box full of this one woman's file that is now in a lawsuit with the bank. So these are the 1,060 documents that I personally, being a banker, faxed in that they claim they never got. I have another gentleman, Bank of America, all of them are in it. Bank of America s simply said after 10 submissions by this gentleman, 
Now keep in mind, the bank does get back $1,500 from your settlement, Camilla, every time they offer to help the people. So why do they want you to submit 10 times? That's $1,500 a pop. After the 10th <laughs> time and working with your moderator again, explaining to him that Bank of America came back and said, you are declined for this modification because we do not have contractual authority from the investor. There again, they don't know who the investor is. So I thought, okay, if you say this is Wells Fargo's the investor, all right, Wells Fargo. I did write them. Wells Fargo came back and said it's against our contractual authority to tell them if they can modify or not. We don't care. I took <laughs> these two letters and sent them to your moderator who came back and told the, the homeowner, I'm sorry, we really just can't help you, but, and I cannot get you the PSA to prove it because the trust is not even trading anymore. But, you know, you can do a deed in lieu of or you can do a short sale. <laughs> and I explained to him that he'd been there for 30 years, and yes, he will get something done on this home if I have to keep him there another 30 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so after that, they, uh, they were so upset with me at B of A, and they do like to hang up on me. They don't like, I think they've got my number down. But they sold him off. And another thing they did to you, Camilla, in your national mortgage settlement, you, they, you put all these restrictions, okay, even though with their little loopholes in there. But what did they do? B of A sold them all off to NationStar. Wells Fargo sold theirs off. Now they're with SLS, SPS, all these other little debt collectors. So they got out from under your settlement totally. They gave you money to help the people. You set up a, a group of bureaucracy to out here to help the people. And what do they tell me? I'm sorry, we can't help the people. So yeah, I am very disappointed in what's going on. The documents like they were talking about with um, Marina, it, I looked at all 500 of the documents that she used in that audit, and all 500 were fraudulent. Out of the 100 people that have come to me, I've looked at their documents. All of them should be suing the banks. All of them should come back and sue you for not doing what you should have done with Dan, your job. we will. Yeah. Amen. We will. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah, Candace. Thank exactly you very much right for all here. you're doing. Okay. That is wow. Candace. Thank you, Candace. And I, I had just one question for you, Candace. Should we indict the district attorneys that refuse? Is, is that something that you think is doable? Well, they're not doing their job. They were put in there by the people, and they're not doing their job. They're actually helping the banksters do what they're doing. So I, I don't know. I'm not going to say that they're being paid off for this, but there's got to be some sweetheart deals working somewhere. Some of these people have got to step up to the plate, do their job, do these audits, and bring the pe things back to the people. Because I can assure you, in the 38 years I was in banking, it was always their goal to, one, control the rates, control the money. Now we need to control the land. And that's what they're taking. They're stealing the land of our people, not only in, in the United States, but across the world. Yeah. Yep. Very well. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. You know, on that thought, Dudley, the second female district attorney in the history of Santa Barbara, she made this great speech, and I taped it all. I haven't published much of it. When she was running, and when she was done, I approached her. And I'm saying this particularly because you, Marina, are also in this county, Santa Barbara. And she literally ran from my camera. <laughs> she didn't want to answer any questions. And this is after two months earlier, she said she'd come on my show. We had scheduled... Uh, Dudley, Miss Dudley, to be on our show so I could ask her some fair, objective questions about indicting Tom Snedden and about the crimes that <laughs> the late Christina Stanley got away with. I mean, these are fair questions. We have evidence. In fact, there's an attorney named uh, Courtney who went to prison for being, uh, because he had a guy named Rex Phillips lost his house through flim flamming and attorneys, uh, crooked attorneys. And Rex bit like a mad dog, and he wouldn't let go. <laughs> and Rex is probably home tonight watching in Santa Maria because he's moved from Solvang to Santa Maria. But he lost his $2 million home. And I just had some fair questions. Dudley literally, and I have it on tape, my cameraman caught her running by me to leave that meeting in Santa Barbara. She did not want to answer any questions about anything. She knew she was going to beat Josh Lynn, and I got a a rag sheet on Josh Lynn and his good buddy Dan Raymer. You can look up my YouTube clip. 
called Dan the Man. <laughs> and I caught him in his million dollar house he couldn't possibly have bought uh, after his ex-wife's and the way he was, his lifestyle. But yet he had this house free and clear. How does that happen? How did, you know, I just got to say this again. Dan Raymer, I know you're happy down there in Venezuela now, and you're beyond <laughs> our jurisdiction, and you're getting your county pension down there. But Dan, you promised to come on my show. You just didn't want me taping you in your driveway that day because you were in your house owned by your trust under somebody else's name, which is why you didn't list it on your Form 700. But Dan, with all the girlfriends you had, the ex-wives you had, and the low salary you had in the DA's office, how did you come up with $1.1 million exactly. in cash exactly. to buy a house for 600000 and then have the escrow pay you back the excess 500000 as if it was a legitimate real estate deal? I want you to answer this, Dan. <laughs> Miss Dudley, why aren't you investigating one of your own former employees who has a one-page Form 700 discloses nothing? Exactly. Absolutely. No stocks, no bonds, no savings accounts. Yet he had $80,000 to give to Miss Dudley's opponent, Josh Lynn. <laughs> Josh, why aren't you coming on my show and explaining to me exactly when did you pay back that $80,000 campaign fund? Or has that been converted to an Ill illegal in-your-pocket contribution? Which would be a felony. Oh, but I'm not saying you committed the felony. I just want to know if you ever paid it back to Dan the Man. <laughs> Go on my YouTube clip and put in William Wagner, comma, Dan the Man, and see him sweating bullets. And he's looking this way and that way, waiting for the FBI to come out and grab him. Because he can't figure out how I tracked him down on his house overlooking Santa Barbara. That's not even in his name. You and know, I'd like to know how he buys it. How do you go into an escrow and lay down $1.1 million in cold cash? I'm not talking about bank drafts. I mean cold cash into the escrow and then have the escrow fork back, what, a half a million or something change? I might be off a few hundred thousand dollars. But how does that happen? Dan the man, come back from Venezuela and explain this to me. Dudley, explain to me how you cannot investigate this. You know, William. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> part, of, part of the research that I did included, I found 11 companies, bank institutions, that were not in existence when the deeds of trust and the notes were, were originated. That's over 2,800 of them. And I submitted that to the district attorney's office. Why is not the district attorney's office investigating deeds of trust that were uh, by entities that didn't exist, means those contracts do not exist, means those people are paying monthly mortgage payments in the millions of dollars out of just Santa Barbara co County, just 11 companies, and that's that. And here's the, the clincher. That of those of those uh, deeds of trust that I found that didn't have the the entities didn't exist at the time we're talking countrywide we're talking IndyMac Bank after these institutions have collapsed we have two judges that are I don't know if they're aware of this they that are sitting <laughs> on the bench who took loans out over worth over seven hundred thousand dollars from countrywide when countrywide didn't exist they have uh, reconveyances on wow. their properties wow. from those companies that didn't exist. So they, didn't have, exist. they have potentially three loans wow. out there circulating in the secondary market in the second, that, they, that they don't know about. We have actually a, a deputy in the, dis, in the recorder's office and, uh, and a spouse that's in the uh, deputy in the district attorney's office who all have a first and a second mortgage by Countrywide when Countrywide didn't exist. I approached them. And I said, here, look, you know, investigate yourself. Here it is. And I asked them, <laughs> what are you going to do about it? And they said, oh, we've talked to our people, and we don't really believe you, and we're going to just continue to pay our monthly mortgage payment. And I said, my jaw dropped. It was not what I was expecting. And I said, who are you going to be paying your monthly mortgage payments on your first and your second two when this institution didn't even exist? No, no answer. Good questions. We're going to have to try to, hey, I invite you again, Miss Dudley, to come on my show. I will give you equal time. I promise you, 45 minutes, I will not interrupt you. You can say whatever you want, just a one-on-one. -on -one. You know what? Thomas Mesereau, who defended Michael Jackson, was not afraid to come on my show and do a one-on-one -on -one interview, and there was no guarantees, no promises about any questions that would or would not be asked. I'll give you the same thing. 
You just come on, and I will ask you whatever I think comes up, or maybe Karen. Bring Marina back. Or Marina yeah, plants in my go. head. And yeah. let's just have a real one-on-one, oh, -on -one honest discussion. Can you do that, Miss Dudley? Come Can on, you do Ms. That? Dudley, show come up. On. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. You know my come number. On. Come on. <laughs> All right, waiting next.